So we're pretty good at marketing. I told you we have 940 applicants for 30 openings. When you have a large number of applicants, you can be picky. Employers love that. So we do a boot camp prep course that, in general, if we're looking for 30 apprentices, we have 60 go through that first step. Because what we've learned, someone can interview really well. How do they really do when they're actually in the program? And so from this is, in our first cohort, we had eight weeks of doing the first IT certification. And then from that, we picked that. The top half of the people from the class who helped out each other the most. And then that's who went through the boot camp training. Again, it's finding the best of the best so the employers can get the best of the best. And then they start one year of on the job training. What's kind of unique for us is our tagline a pop up university. Picture what a pop up university would be. That would be a university that says, hey, we need people with these skills. Three months later, let's start the training. That's what we do, is because. We don't have to, there is no academic center. We're tied to certification, so we bring in trainers already tied to the certification. But it's a pop-up university directly tied to employer orders for skilled talent. So as Harlan talks about new skills that need to be available to the employers, we'll do a cohort just of skill one. And then three months later, we can do another cohort for skill two because there's no bureaucracy. It's really tied. We got employer orders, and we have ways that we can fund our efforts. We also found four key things for our success. The first one is if you focus on smaller size employers like the people here, it's a handshake. And then they say, let's do it. The more you work for a big company, the more there's hurdles. And so I found. I can get five small companies lined up in one-tenth the time as one big company. So our whole focus is, the reason we have so many employers is one meeting with a small uh, company and then you're done. We also talked about unique, extensive screening process. The employees want, employers want people they never would have seen in their applicant pool. And the reason they wouldn't have seen them is they didn't have the tech skills. And they don't want to take the risk of someone who's just a great communicator with no tech skill. They want both. So that's, that's what we do. Um, we really want to give the company and the employee choice. And that's how we do the match.com. When some of the companies came in, some of our top um, apprentices said, that's the only company I want to work for. That's a perfect fit for me. And it's not because they went to the website for the company. They heard the company in 15 minutes say why we're awesome. That's, I think, the future of education also. It's not classes, it's careers. And that there's a big difference between taking a lot of classes and actually taking classes directly tied to career. And then the last one is soft skills versus tech expertise. Our foundation has to be soft skills. Think about what Harlan's saying. Computers are really bad at anything that requires empathy, the way I explain computers to people is they're high-speed morons. <laughs> but anything that requires empathy or you know that kind of non-mathematical thought is a human. So the more we get people with great soft skills that are also technical, there's a theme, what I'm saying, you end up with this amazing workforce. So when we started the talk, we talked about how we can create a more diverse ecosystem in the area with tech. Our initial goal was a thousand additional head of household tech jobs. And many people look at me and they say, okay, Soul Partners is you and Michael Spicarola. How are you going to do a thousand people and it's just two of you? Um, well, I'll tell you how we do it, is we build one step at a time. Our first cohort had 30 apprentices. Our second will have 52. Our third will have 77, and if you grow it by 25% every time, you make the numbers. But what's crazy is we doubled the number from 1,000 to 2,000, which really many people say, how are you going to do that? So I'm going to show you the next slide. Here's the key. What Harlan said earlier about the remote distributed teams, we're going to do something we're calling rural sourcing, that out of the co-working locations, we're going to have intact teams of Bay Area and LA companies that actually have groups of Google employees or Facebook employees that work out of co-working. 
open spaces. They still live here, but as intact teams, they work remotely. They're still apprentices. And the beauty for the Bay Area companies, if you think about computer science, a system software job, that what the local pay is for that versus the Bay Area, it's $41,000 less here than the Bay Area. 41,000. Not for the base, that's just the difference there. So we can have an economic model where the Bay Area companies can get skilled talent at a much lower price, but it also helps with wage growth here because there's competition for people to say, I can work for a local company or I can work for Bay Area, but either way, I stay in slow. That's the key. So what ends up happening is when you add all, half the people working for Bay Area or Santa Monica, here through co-working spaces, and all the local job growth, we can pull off 2,000 additional head of household jobs. Because if you create talent, more companies come, and the companies that are here grow faster. So those are my slides, and we'll have more open questions if 